In this video, we're gonna take a look at a brown ink by Pelican, their 2017 Ink of the Year, Smoky Quartz. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to a brown playlist, so if you'd prefer a different brown ink, or for some reason you can't get your hands on this one, you can find a really nice one there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample, 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, gentle shading. Brown starts darker, works its way a little bit lighter. Fox starts a little lighter, works its way a little darker. Five seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. The shade shows a little nicer as quick goes light or sorry, dark to light to dark. Brown goes dark to light to dark. Fox goes dark to light to dark. I really like it here, nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both does show some color variation. I don't think the extra fine showing it where it got lighter in the middle here. Medium shows it better. It definitely showed better in the medium writing. And a smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pierre Cardin president with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Now the second writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. We have no bleeding, no ghosting, the 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 17 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both are showing us no color variation. We're not getting it on this paper, but the smear test, you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that it immediately started bonding with the paper, at least this gray tone at the bottom. As it pushes up, we start to see a kind of turquoise that's there, a, a turquoise blue right at the top of the gray, which is very interesting. And then we see this very nice orange and what appears to be kind of a red at the top. Now the one on the right is allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water. It shows how complex this ink really is. This light gray or this gray that's at the bottom is really into the line, giving the idea of some permanence. We do still see hints of that turquoise at the top. And then there's a slight bit of separation where the yellow and orange the yellow is a little more obvious here than it was in the first chromatography. Barely saw it there. The, there's a little bit of yellow and then we push up into an orange and the red that's right at the top doesn't look nearly as dark as it did in the first chromatography. But we might expect just a little bit of resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some gentle shading. Quick starts a little dark, lighter and works its way very dark at the K. Brown is a mid-tone, sorry, a dark brown. And then it gets to be a mid-tone at the W and very dark again at the N. Five seconds to dry. Look at how dark the is compared to everything around it. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, shades very nicely, quick is very dark, brown is much lighter, Fo or sorry, jumps goes lighter to darker, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show a little bit of color variation in the extra fine, much more in the medium, and it showed much better in the medium. And the smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. 
looking at the highlighter, I would not use this in a note-taking situation if I need to go back and highlight, because look at that. It just turned to a muddy mess. Now, water is not really doing a whole lot to get rid of this ink. It's a lot of it is very much there. The same happens with the pen flush. Not a lot of movement from the paper. One third bleach solution is mostly removing it, leaving a little bit of discoloration on the paper. The good news here is it only took water to get this out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on Mead notebook paper. Now this paper is really not made for fountain pens. There is a lot of spots where it's bleeding heavy into the page, but not through the page, not touching the page underneath, but not allowing me to use the back of the page. Personally, there is some light ghosting. The medium has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. Did pretty well there, I think. The extra fine is lighter than the stub, just a hair. Some of what you see smearing there, that was my finger smearing it before it dried, which was strange. I must have put my finger immediately down onto it. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Scrubby shows no color variation. We didn't get it. And the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Pelican Edelstein's 2017 Ink of the Year, Smoky Quartz, has a viscosity of 1.72, making this a wet ink. If you're interested in how all that viscosity stuff is done, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at the composition notebook like you would have used in your science lab class. As a paper not made for fountain pens, it performed incredibly well. We only see some coming through at the scrubby. No bleeding and no ghosting going on. Very nice. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the medium with no feather spread, halo sheen, some light shading. Brown starts a little darker, gets a little lighter, a little darker at the end of the N. The is much darker than the word quick. One second to dry. The scrubby shows almost no color variation, although we do get a little bit in the writing. In the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Edelstein Smoky Quartz has an average dry time of 9 seconds, making this a fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Now we do get bleed spots that touch the page underneath and that is up here where the medium wrote. In these spots specifically where I circled those had touches on the under page. All of these others that we see bleeding through here, they're not touching the page underneath. Strangely that did it, but that did not. We have a ton of ghosting. You could not use the back of the page and personally, I wouldn't want to use it on this paper because it does ruin the page underneath. The medium has feathering, tiny feathering, the entire way through. It has spread to about a, to about a broad. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Not a good ink for this paper. The extra fine is about the same tone as the medium. It does have tiny feathering the whole way through. All of brown, all of jumps, all of dog. It spreads to about a medium, no halo, no sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Scrubby shows no color variation. We didn't get any in the smear test. You could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Edelstein's Smoky Quartz, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a really nice purple, and I chose Diatrementis Joan of Arc, or Violet. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Pelican Edelstein's 2017 Ink of the Year Smoky Quartz? This was the first Edelstein ink I ever tried. I've here and I've heard a bunch of people don't like it, but I love it. This is the second bottle here, so if you have it and hate it, Throw it this way. I love this tone and the shading, even though the shading's pretty gentle. 
So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? A wet pen is going to put down a very dark tone that for me is kind of blah. But a medium to dry pen of any nib size puts down a much more pleasant tone and helps bring out a bunch of the shading that I enjoy from this ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Hiroshizuku's Sayoro, or Dew on Pine Tree, which is probably how I'm gonna have to say it.